Good morning to you and welcome to Friday prayers in the villages of the Cookhams. Our gospel story today is from Luke's 11th chapter and follows on from Christ's healing of someone who was dumb. And mischief makers, those who opposed Christ's teachings, claimed that Jesus was curing people by invoking the name of Beelzebul, a name associated with the devil. Luke wrote, But some of them said, He casts out demons by Beelzebul, the ruler of the demons. Others, to test him, kept demanding from him a sign from heaven. But he knew what they were thinking and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself becomes a desert and house falls on house. If Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that I cast out the demons by Beelzebul. Now if I cast out the demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your exorcists cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I cast out the demons, then the kingdom of God has come to you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his castle, his property is safe. But when one stronger than he attacks him and overpowers him, he takes away his armour in which he trusted and divides his plunder. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it wanders through waterless regions looking for a resting place. But not finding any, it says, I will return to my house from which I came. When it comes, it finds it swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they enter and live there, and the last state of that person is worse than the first. This is the word of the Lord. Now there's a very great deep mystery at work in today's Gospel reading. Not the mystery of Jesus or of his miraculous exorcism, his cure of the dumb person. The mystery is about the Pharisees, the deeply religious people of the time. And the mystery is this. How could these devoutly religious men look at Christ and see Satan? How could they witness Jesus' godly, miraculous works and see them as the works of the devil? How could they have missed the spiritual reality that unfolded before their very eyes. It wasn't hidden, it was as clear as day, and they should have recognised it. But they saw Jesus as a challenge to themselves, a threat to their power and privileges, and so they saw him as evil. They literally looked at God and saw Satan. And these were religious men. They saw what they wanted to see, not was actually there. As such, their spiritual blindness was effectively a self-inflicted disease. It developed because they intentionally distorted the reality of what they had witnessed. And we know that to be wrong. But can we be guilty of the same spiritual blindness today? Do we believe only that which confirms our prejudices, confirms what we want to hear? Or do we dig deep, explore the truth, and then rejoice in genuine realities in the study and development of our faith? Amen. And so let us pray. Compassionate God, 
who sent Jesus Christ to deliver us from all manner of injustices and equalities, create in us new hearts and enlarged visions to see the image of God in every person, irrespective of background, race or ethnicity. May we be generous in our love of others as we work towards ending misunderstanding, racism and injustice. And we ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And now a prayer for peace in the Middle East. God of mercy and compassion, of grace and reconciliation, pour your power upon all your children in the Middle East, Jews, Muslims, Christians, Palestinians and Israelis, all children of the God of Abraham. Let hatred be turned into love, fear to trust, despair to hope, oppression to freedom, occupation to liberation, that violent encounters may be replaced by loving embraces and peace and justice be experienced by all. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. And now please join in with me as we pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now we ask for God's blessing on us. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw him to himself. May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service. May the joy of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be among us and remain with us always. Amen. And so farewell for now. And let's keep on praying for an end to the terrible wars in both the Middle East and Ukraine. Farewell for now.